But let's get straight to our market panel. Barry Bannister, Stiefel's chief equity strategist, and George C., co-founder and chairman of Annandale Capital, join me now. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Barry, I will start with you, because coming into this year, um, you were a little early with the call, but you basically said that the S&P was going to hit 4,300 uh, by April. It happened in June. Then you said that the market would largely stay flat through the end of the year. Obviously, we're having this rally now. What is your expectation for 2024? Well, as you recall, in the third quarter, Morgan, we had a big drop. And mm -hmm. then at the October lows, we said it would rally back. It overshot that mid-4,000s that we expected by a couple hundred points. Uh, but generally, it came back to being flat with, uh, with July 30th when it was in the mid four, in the low 4,600 range. You know, I think it's closing the, the barn door after the house. The horse has already bolted. Uh, we're just not that excited about S&P 500 upside. What we like is the shifting within the cap-weighted index, and we like this, what we call cyclical value. Uh, we have an embedded option with no premium on better economic growth because the cyclical value names, banks, financial services, energy, industrials, real estate, transports, none of them really reflect the kind of uh, economic growth continuing that you would expect if the PMI manufacturing index, for example, goes back into the low 50s from this contractionary high 40s level. Okay. George, want to get your thoughts on what you like going into 2024, especially with the NDX, the NASDAQ 100, now on pace for its best year since 1999, which we know was a very telling year from a very different market cycle. Hey, Morgan. Well, I, I heard Jeremy Siegel on the, on the program earlier saying that he thought – Stocks would go up 10 to 12% in 2024. If he could let me bank that today, the old game show where you could bank your profits, I'd take that right now. I think that would be a great sequel to this year. And I, I think that basically people forget that we've come nowhere in two years. If we're just now hitting our highs again that were hit in early 2022, that's roughly two years where we've basically gone nowhere because we had such a bad 2022. So for next year, we're really focused on areas that should really catch up, especially with the Fed cutting and interest rates pulling back, and that would be regional banks and insurance companies and other more interest rate sensitive companies. We also think energy is due for a rebound from a bad 2023. So we're, we're still holding on to our Googles and our Microsofts and our Amazons, but we're looking for areas of the market that, that basically have been left behind or might be takeover bait as something to really focus on and pivot to slightly, not not aggressively, but maybe five to 10 percent of movement. Interesting. I, I'm hearing some of the same sectors and groups from both of you. Um, Barry, your investment thesis for 2024, how much of this hinges on a soft landing actually coming to fruition? Yeah, you know, we've had a, a non-consensus view that the S&P 500 and the market and the economy itself had a pseudo-recession, along with my colleague Thomas Carroll. Our view has been that uh, 1Q22 to 1Q23, within what National Bureau of Economic Research watches, income production, sales, employment, and fixed investment, they were all weaker, and some most went negative. However, employment was at such a high level going into that, uh, you had the best job availability relative to workers in the entire post-World War II 75, 80-year period, uh, that all we did was take away some of the availability of jobs. So if labor held up, no recession. As long as labor holds on, there is no recession. So uh, that's been our view so far. Now, if I look out to the next year, uh, I don't think the Fed should cut more than about three times to flatten those twos, tens in the curve. Uh, but if they do more, then they'll pay for it in late 24 and 25, because inflation will probably come back. Um, George, I'm going to ask you the same question, especially since we know, and it was on full display this year, that the equity market takes so many of its cues from the bond market. It's, it's such an inverse, beautiful relationship, and they dance beautifully together when it works. And I, I would just say that the bond market's given us an unbelievable uh, Santa Claus rally, actually beginning well before Thanksgiving this year. And I think we have pulled six to nine months of gains into this year. So if we had, if we had a double-digit winning year next year, I'd be elated because I'm, I'm concerned we have pulled a lot forward. And I would also say that it's it's too cute by, by at least half a loaf when people say, well, if the Fed has to cut four, five, six times next year because the economy's not performing well, that's even better because then we have lower interest rates and markets can soar even further. I think the one wild card out here that people aren't really focused on is if 
the economy gives us a Grinch-like uh, lump of stocking full of coal and, and ashes and switches, and we have very low growth or even negative growth at some point next year, probably in the latter half of the year, I think that could be a really high hurdle for a highly priced market. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I'm not betting that way, but I think there's a, there's a larger than small chance that that could be a possibility we're going to have to face down.